Hello, Nanasa. Welcome back to our session today. I am instructor CPA Rimbo Frederick, and it is a, a continuation of what you were doing earlier on. Remember, we have uh, introduced uh, the concept. We had introduced the concept of a capital asset pricing model. We talked of uh, the aspect of a arbitrage pricing model. Now, class today it is a very interesting session because we are going to introduce a very interesting model, which we normally refer to it as a former French model, and Pastor Stamback model, right? These are very mo uh, interesting models when it comes to aspect of uh, us analyzing our investments, and that's what I want us to do today. So, uh, just as I've mentioned, remember, like uh, in our previous uh, classes, we had uh, talked of uh, the concept of capital asset pricing model, right? Where we mentioned that uh, this uh, portfolio, uh, basically, uh, the whole concept here is that uh, we are looking at portfolio that are affected by systematic risk alone that is one item that we must always tend to have in mind and in addition to that case you also mentioned that uh, basically at this point the investor holds a portfolio which is fully diversified in essence that is uh, the only prevailing risk is systematic risk which is measured using a beta factor which is measured using a beta factor also another assumption that uh, we had also talked about in our previous class in relation to this is that uh, all investors basically uh, can uh, all the investors of course uh, in the market can borrow and uh, lend out any amount of money at the risk-free rate also there are key item we mentioned that uh, for KPM ideally we normally tend to look at a single factor model right this is just some of the concepts that uh, we are looking at this is a single factor this is a single factor model Mm -hmm. I just want to, to give you basically this journey up to what I want us to study today. So uh, in addition to that, we also went ahead and talked about the arbitrage pricing theory or arbitrage pricing model, where we mentioned that uh, the whole concept of uh, arbitrage pricing theory, the whole premise, it is uh, on a capital asset pricing model. So at this point, we are looking at multi-factor model right we will not only consider one factor that will affect our returns in the market but rather we'll be talking of various factors which will have an impact over expected returns and this is what we talked about the aspect of doing arbitrage pricing theory which we refer to it as a multiple factor model i know you'll be you'll wonder why is molimo giving us all these items that are we mentioned right this is important because when we'll be looking at now the farmer French model, when we'll be talking about the farmer French model, if I were to start with this, farmer uh, French model, you'll find that uh, this is uh, simply an extension of capital asset pricing model, right? These are uh, number one, we must be able to understand that at this point, I'm simply looking at an extension of capital asset pricing model that is one thing that we should be able to understand anytime you're talking about the farmer french model i know you'd be like molimu do you also have a farmer in cap uh, or rather do you also have a farmer in uh, financial management yes you'll find that uh, basically uh, this uh, aspect of uh, the farmer french model it was uh, developed by uh, two uh, basically uh, interesting uh, persons when it comes to matters to do with financial management, right? And this guy is basically, of course, if at all you can all remember about this person that you remember referred to was uh, Eugene Farmer and uh, Kenneth French, right? Eugene Farmer and uh, Kenneth French. These are the two guys basically who came up with this model. And they are very interesting in a way like uh, they wanted to develop a model which will simply assist us as uh, maybe aspect of analyst to be able to number one basically determine the uh, or rather to price our assets in the market as well as also doing this investment analysis analysis so you'll find that uh, these two gentlemen came up with uh, this uh, model which they refer to it as the farmer french model of course from their from their names okay so uh, on this case, my good students will find that uh, this model, if, uh, compare it with the CAPEM, this model consider three factors. This model considers 
three factors. So we normally refer to this model as what? Three factors model, right? Three factor model. And uh, the factors that uh, this model normally consider, we are going to mention them, which number one, we normally tend to talk of number one factor, which we normally refer to it as what? The market risk. Number one, we normally tend to talk about market risk, which ideally at this point you're talking about what? The market factor being our number one. Market factor. Okay. So anytime you have talk of market factor, my good students, what must we be able to have in mind or what must we be able to recall or understand? That's another important question that we should always tend to ask ourselves. So you'll find that uh, for market risk or rather the market factor, you'll find that uh, it is uh, similar to the beta in the CAPM. Because at this point, it uh, simply measures the excess return of the overall market. That is, uh, it's like, uh, remember the risk premium, right? Recall a uh, risk premium, what you had looked at this in a uh, capital asset pricing model, where the risk premium, ideally, we are looking at what? The return of the market minus what? Minus risk free. So you'll find that at this point, ideally, we are looking at the excess. We are looking at uh, the excess return of the overall market. It measures excess return of the overall of the overall market. So this is a very ideal and very important to note. Like whenever we are talking of this factor, which you are referring to as the market risk or rather the market factor, you'll find that uh, it measures the excess return of the overall market. Very important to understand. It's all about aspect of systematic risk, right? Number two factor here that you must also consider is what you normally refer to as the size factor. Size factor. And Molimo is going to explain the size factor here. You'll find that uh, size factor, ideally, we normally tend to talk about uh, S, uh, basically uh, S and B, right? We normally tend to talk about the concept of S and B. I know you'll wonder, Molimo, now, what are all these that you're telling us? You'll find that this is a very simple concept because anytime you're thinking of uh, S and B, simply, we are looking at small minus big. Small minus big. Small minus big. These are what you are referring to as the S and B. Small minus big. Uh -huh. It's getting interesting, right? We are going to jump uh, deeper into that and uh, explain it further so that you guys should be able to understand it clearly. You'll find that uh, the size factor, the size factor is simply, you'll find that... Uh, for the historical outperformance of small stocks over large cap stocks, in this case, it accounts basically for that, right? We're looking at it as a factor that uh, accounts for the historical outperformance of small stocks over large cap stocks. Ideally, you'll find that uh, this factor normally suggests that smaller companies, they normally tend to have higher expected returns than bigger companies. That is a what this model suggests that uh, smaller companies tend to have what? T tend to have uh, basically what? Higher returns. So that is what you're referring to as size factor model. Small minus big. Mm -hmm. The third factor here, third factor, we normally tend to look at this factor which you normally refer to as uh, the value factor. Value factor value factor at times you'll also find that some books will also refer to it as what hml h m l and what does this stands for this stands basically for uh what we normally refer to as uh, basically high minus low hml this is high minus low that's why you're referring to it as what as hml so you'll find that uh, under this factor, my good students, you'll find that uh, it considers the historical outperformance of value stocks compared to growth stocks. Simply, you'll find that uh, this factor implies that uh, value stocks, which are considered undervalued by traditional uh, basically valuation metrics, tend to have what? Tend to have higher returns. 
the aspect of the undervalued stocks. Recall when we are looking at it, uh, remember the concept of alpha, right? Alpha, like for Capemo, we are considering basically the return of uh, the security or uh, portfolio minus, of course, what the aspect of uh, the Capem or SML line, right? Where in this case, you are talking about the efficient, inefficient, and super efficient. If at all you can recall, we had a look at this concept, right? So you'll find that uh, when you're talking about the farmer French model, ideally it considers these three factors. These are the three factors that basically it is going to consider at any given point whenever you want to determine the returns. Uh -huh. Digest that, it is very important. So that uh, after this, my good students, it is important to be able to understand that therefore any time we are talking of uh, this model for us to determine, of course, the return, for us to determine the return of our security or portfolio. In this case, I'll be considering these three factors. Of course, we'll be talking of the aspect to do with our treasury bills, which are simply our risk-free, right? Or if at all, we can use it in this case. Remember what we did. Talk about what? Treasury bills. So I'm having basically here our treasury bills. Okay. In this case, you are going to add, of course, the sensitivity to equity market factor times the equity risk premium. Sensitivity. Sensitivity to equity sensitivity to basically uh, this is uh, of course uh, sensitivity to equity sensitivity to equity market factor sensitivity to equity market factor okay we are going to multiply by the equity risk premium equity risk premium and uh, at this point, remember the sensitivity. In this case, it is measured by what? It is measured by beta. So it's like you're talking about, about what? The beta of the market, right? Times the risk premium. And remember, risk premium is return of the market minus our risk free. So all these, these are our first factor, right? Time it as factor number one. Factor number two, my good students, we are talking of sensitivity to size of uh, sensitivity, basically. Uh, to size factor, sensitivity, sensitivity, to size factor, right? To size factor. We multiply by, of course, our size risk premium. Size uh, risk premium. Size risk premium here. Size risk premium. Okay? So that as at the end of the day, we're also going to add our third factor here, which is a sensitivity to value factor, sensitivity to value factor, sensitivity to value factor, we multiply by the value risk premium, value risk premium. Recall this, right? So, this is uh, how we can determine uh, our return of our security. Basically, what? Using what? Using the Farmer French model. I'm going to simplify this concept so that it will be very easy for us to be able to understand. Okay? So, take this case in a very, very easy manner. You shouldn't be stressed with uh, all these terms, right? So this is like saying we are talking of for us to basically determine our return, right? It's as if you're talking about our risk-free, which is basically measured by treasury bills, right? We add the beta of the market, which is BM, we multiply by the equity risk premium. So this is what? Aspect of our return of the market minus our risk-free. 
right? Return of the market minus our risk free. That is what will give us our risk premium. Then, in addition to that, of course, you are going to take uh, this other component whereby we are going to add, right? We are going to add sensitivity to size factor. That is, of course, the beta of our size factor. We multiply, of course, by the size risk premium, which ideally here we are talking of what? SMBM. SMBM. Okay. Then we are going to add this component, which is sensitivity to value factor. So basically, I'm having the beta of our value factor. We multiply by the value risk premium, which is what? HML. So I'll be having by HML factor, you see? So having this, this is what will give us basically what? The return of the market or uh, the return of the security that you are looking at. So that is uh, as simple as uh, that. And it is very vital for us to be able to understand this concept very clearly. Take your time whereby you'll find that uh, whatever that Molimu has given us below, it is simply to make sure that we are very good. We are very good when it comes to these aspects or item. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> this is all about aspect of uh, the former French model. The main item that we need to basically understand is this concept here. Okay. So after we are done with that case, I'm going to combine it with this other model which you are referring to as the pasta, talk about uh, pasta, stand back. Right? Pasta, stand back model. A very interesting model. A very, very interesting model that you guys, you should always be very interested with it because as at the end of the day, it more relates to what we've just done right now. So you'll find that uh, when you are talking about the pasta stand back model, of course, this is an extension. This is an extension of what? This is simply an extension of former French model. This is simply an extension of former French model. This is simply an extension of former French model. Because you have uh, talked of a word former French, former French model entails, so you'll find that simply these are literally an extension of that. And uh, of course, uh, this uh, was uh, uh, developed by these two uh, important guys, that is uh, Lubos Pasta and Robert Stamberg, right? Lubos, right? Lubos Pasta and Robert Stamberg. These are the guys uh, who, are, who are basically, of course, uh, economists and at the same time, basically you find that uh, they were very interesting. Uh, they were very interested whenever it comes to matters to securities, right? And of course, aspect to do with, uh, aspect to do with uh, basically investments. So in addition to uh, basically all these other factors that uh, we were looking at under former French model, You'll find that uh, basically uh, these uh, two uh, gentlemen, in this case, you'll find that uh, they suggest that stocks with lower liquidity tend to have what? Higher expected returns. They suggested that uh, the stocks with uh, lower liquidity, they normally tend to have what? They normally tend to have the higher, higher returns, high expected returns, of course, to compensate. The investors for the added risk of uh, the trading in uh, less liquid assets. So you'll find that uh, the concept that uh, these two gentlemen introduced and their main contribution actually was in relation to their main contributions actually was in relation to what the liquidity risk and expected uh, this is uh, of course uh, the liquidity risk liquidity risk and uh, expected stock returns and uh, expected uh, stock returns, right? So this is the main concept that basically these uh, two gentlemen introduced, more so the aspect of what? Liquidity risk. 
So they suggested that at this point, for us to determine the return of our security or of our market here, or rather of our portfolio, we should be having the aspect to do with the same concept which we are talking of an extension of our past uh, extension of our former French, whereby I'd be having risk free into beta of the market, risk premium of uh, the market, that is of course return of the market minus uh, risk free. In this case, of course, uh, we add the beta of the size of the market, S and B, right? Small minus big. In this case, we take the third factor here, which is of course the value, so beta of the value factor times HML. So whatever that you are going to introduce here, my good students, now it is a liquidity factor. Now it is the liquidity factor that we are going to introduce in this context. So in this case, we'll be having, of course, the sensitivity to equity market factor. That is uh, sensitivity plus sensitivity, sensitivity to equity, sensitivity, of course, uh, to liquidity factor, sensitivity to liquidity, sensitivity to liquidity factor, we multiply by the risk, we multiply, of course, by the risk premium, talk about, of course, uh, the liquidity risk premium here liquidity risk premium liquidity risk premium right so that's a factor that you are going to introduce so here we'll be talking of uh the beta of liquidity we multiply by the aspect of what by the liquidity now liquidity use l a r l i q so these are what you should be having. So you'll find that uh, these two models basically nowadays they are very common when it comes to financial management and they are very much applicable. They are very, very much applicable. So now because you are having a clear concept on that, I want us to look at this question which was uh, simply tested back in, uh, of course, uh, this question was uh, tested in, uh, that should be, uh, August or rather November 2020, I know majority of the students, they literally had a kind of a difficulty on this question. But we find that it is a very, very easy question. It is a very, very easy question. So these are questions that I've literally shared with us there. And I believe that it is a uh, very visible. I believe it is a uh, very visible. So I want us to basically use this question to be able to understand and summarize the whole of this concept to do with uh, these two models, the former French model and Pastor Stambach model. Very important that we should be able to understand that. Uh -huh. So this is a November 2020, question number two. So allow me to basically have it down there, which I believe it will be very visible, right? And just have it somewhere there. So that is the November 2020, question number two, specifically part B. So because now we have understood uh, this concept, let us now cement that knowledge with this question of ours here. Uh-huh. So what are you told in this question? In this question, my good students, you are told that I'm having this company, the estimated factor sensitivities of Diamond Limited to former French factors and the pasta standback model factors and the risk premium associated with those factors are given in the table below. Market factor, size factor, value factor, liquidity factor, the treasury bill rate I'm given at the rate of 5%. Okay. <clears throat> Look at the question here. Number one, the required rate using the farmer French model, three marks. Number two, the required rate of return using Pasta Standback model, PSM. 
I'm giving another three marks. So literally, these are like uh, six marks that a good examiner is giving us for free. These are like uh, six marks that a good examiner is literally giving us for, for free. So the first thing that must always tend to come at the back of your mind, my good students, is how to determine the first component, farmer French model, right? Which at this point, they want us to determine, of course, the required rate of return. So at this point, I should be able to recall this formula of ours. You see this one? This is a farmer French, right? This is a farmer French. We're talking about it. Farmer French. So immediately show your examiner that you know what you're doing by putting this model on your paper. So the moment I have this model, very well, I can be able to come and determine our, uh, our, our we can be able to determine our return very easily. So that in this case, my return, we should be having the risk-free. The risk-free there, according to our question, a good examiner has given us what? You can see it is 5%, right? That is a 5%. So I'll basically be having like 5 there. We are going to add what? We are going to add the component of the beta of the market and the risk premium of the market. Were we given those factors in our question, my good students? I can clearly see that we were given. The market factor, factor sensitivity is 1.05. So I'm having 1.05 times basically the risk uh, premium, which I'm given five. Uh huh. We add what? Beta of the size factor, right? Beta of the size factor, and I'm having what? The risk premium of the factor, which in this case, the size factor, I can clearly see I was given the beta to be negative 0 0.65. Look at uh, the size factor. Look at the size factor. I'm given what? I'm given basically minus 0 0.65. We multiply by the risk premium, which was given 2.50. Right? Uh-huh. Then we add what? We add the beta of the value factor, which was given negative 0 0.20. Negative 0 0.20. We multiply by the premium, which was given what? 4. Point, uh, 4.50. 4.50. As simple as that. Which in this case, you should be having what? Take your calculator and work it out for Molimu very, very quickly. If I take my calculator here, I'll be having 5 plus into bracket 1.05 times 5. We add negative 0 0.65 we multiply by 2.50 of course we add negative 0 0.20 times 4.50 in this case it should give us what uh, of course i'm having 7.725 kindly confirm if you're getting the same value with molimo i'm having 7.725 so i'll be having here 7.725 percent of course uh -huh. using the first model which was the farmer french model right farmer french model farmer french model okay you have your three marks we proceed to number two model which in this case is what pasta standback model and once i know or rather once i've seen pasta standback model the only factor that I'm going to add is a liquidity factor. The only additional item that you'll be adding is simply the liquidity factor. And that is to say that would be quite easy now because already my return here using basically these are uh, using uh, using this pasta standback, right? Pasta PSM, pasta standback model, right? I'm having what? I'm having already 7.725, right? We are going to add, of course, the beta of the liquidity here, which, of course, is uh, basically that is component, which in this case, a good examiner has given us there. Look at it. 
For liquidity factor, I'm given the factor sensitivity is 0 0.20, 0 0.20 times the premium I'm given, risk premium, which is 4.50. That is the only thing that you are going to add. So that as at the end of the day, my good students here, what will you be having? I'll just take, uh, of course, uh, that component. That, therefore, you should be having 0 0.20 times 4.50 plus 7.725, whatever that you had already computed. So I'm having what? 8.625%, right? Pasta, stand back, model. So is there any difficulty with these two models? You've all been hearing aspects of Pasta stand back model, you've all been hearing Pharma French model. Is there any difficulty in that? concept. Molimo has clearly tried to give us the whole concept of these two so that by the time you're through with this video, I'm very sure there's no question if you literally understood the whole concept. There's no question which might come in relation to that and you find a challenge of the same. So uh, basically that is uh, what you're required to do. So that is to say literally we are now done with the aspect of portfolio analysis. We've now literally looked at everything in relation to portfolio analysis. So to this point, guys, thank you so much. And let us meet in our next session where we are going now to introduce other concepts. Thank you so much. And let us meet in the next session. Bye-bye.